Hey guys, it's Sakar, and I've got another Mad DK build for you guys for the Fire Song chapter. This has been, without a doubt, my favorite build so far this patch. It hits so hard. The tankiness on it is definitely there. But honestly, this one really hits like a truck, and I love it so much. I definitely recommend trying this one out compared to the other builds. I think that this is the best one yet. So guys, please, I hope you enjoy. And if you're not, please subscribe to the channel. We just passed 4K subs, and we got to get to 5K. So guys... Uh, that's it from me. Let's get on with the video. All right, guys, let's get started. First things first, we're going to look at our character sheet. We want to be a Breton on our Dragonite. I think Breton is the best race when you come to Magnike because of the reduced cost passive on your magic abilities. I absolutely think it's phenomenal, and I think it is without a doubt the best way to go. Uh, I think you have so much damage on this build regardless that helping that extra little bit of sustain really is noticeable. We're going to have 41 points into magic and then 23 points into health to give us a nice magic pool of 23.4k, max health pool of 30.6k, and a max stand pool of 15.3k. And then our Mundus is going to be the warrior. We're going to increase our weapon damage a lot on this build and I really like it. Our food that we're going to be running is Orzorga Smoked Bear Haunch to increase our max health by 4,300 and our stamina and magic recovery by 369. And then we're going to be Vampire Stage 3 because the undeath passive in that is absolutely necessary when it comes to brawler builds in my opinion in Cyrodiil. And I definitely think that this is the way to go. It keeps you tanky and it keeps you from being executed really, really hard because of that undeath passive. The way that you get that 30% reduced cost damage or reduced damage taken at low health. Our gear is going to break down like this. As always for DK, our monster set is going to be blood spawn. Our helmet is going to be a heavy reinforced helmet and our shoulder is going to be a medium impen shoulder. Blood spawn is going to give you stem recovery and then whenever you take damage you have a 6% chance to generate 13 ultimate and increase your physical and spell resistance by 3700 for 5 seconds. That is absolutely amazing for your sustain because Dragonite is really based off of your ultimate gain because when you use your ultimate you gain a bunch of resources back, you gain magic back, stamina, health back. So getting ultimate as fast as possible is really necessary. So blood spawn and Dragonite, they go hand in hand so well. And then on all of our body pieces, we're going to have prismatic enchantments on it. Our chest piece is going to be Mara's Bomb in Reinforced. Mara's Bomb, in my opinion, is the best set in the game right now. You heal for so much and you become so tanky with it. You, you just basically can build everything else into offensive after that. And I love it so much. So our Mara's Bomb is going to give you armor, crit resist, uh, healing taken. And then whenever a negative effect is removed from you, you restore 1,800 health and that can occur once every second. So that's proccing very re regularly. Then whenever you take damage and have six or more negative effects, you restore 1,800 health and then per negative, that's per negative effect as well. And then you cleanse all as well. So that can occur once every 15 seconds. So that is a great cleanse. That's a great heal. I love it so much. Our legs are also going to be heavy Mars bomb and reinforced. And our other body pieces are going to be Burning Spellweave. Uh, I love Burning Spellweave on this build. It increases your weapon damage so much. So the two piece is max magic. The three piece is weapon and spell damage. The four piece is crit chance. And the five piece is when you deal damage with a flame of damage ability. So Dragonite has a lot of those. Uh, you apply the burning status effect to the enemy and increases your weapon and spell damage by 478 for 8 seconds and that can occur every 12 sec or every 12 seconds so it has a 4 second downtime and I honestly I absolutely love this the amount of damage that you get up to on this build is amazing I think that this is definitely the hardest hitting DK that I have this patch and there's a reason why I replaced Deja Trickery for Burning Spellweave you hit so hard and you're still very tanky with this so we're going to be using Light, Burning Spellweave, and Divines as our hands. We're going to be using Light, Burning Spellweave, and Divines as our waist piece as well. And then we're going to be using Light, Burning Spellweave, and Impen that we get a little bit of uh, crit resist as well on this. Our necklace is going to be a Necklace of the Trainee in the Bloodthirsty trait with a reduced magic, health, and stamina glyph on this. That way your sustain is a lot better. This is the only thing that we have to sustain on this build and honestly, you can definitely tell. It really helps you a lot and in my opinion, this is what makes the build really different because that reduced cost passive really helps your sustain and everything else with that damage is amazing. 
So we have one extra slot in our gear, so we're going to be using Trainee to get our health up as high as possible. And then as our Mythic, as always, we're doing Markin because I like the consistency of Markin, gaining that 200 weapon and spell damage and then the 2314 armor. It's just consistent, and I really, really like it a lot. And then our other ring is going to be Mara's Bomb in Bloodthirsty with a weapon damage enchantment on it. And then also our Markin ring also had a weapon damage enchantment on it. Our front bar uh, weapons are going to be Dual Wield the Burning Spellweave Maces. Our main hand is going to be Nernhone with a shock damage glyph on it. And our off hand is going to be Charge with a disease damage glyph on it. And then our back bar is going to be a Defending Mara's Bomb Ice Staff. Our skills are going to line up like this. Molten Whip is going to be your main damage ability, but you're going to want to use that every three stacks because of your Seething Fury passive in there. Once you activate a molten, an Ardent Flame ability three times, your Molten, your molten Whip is basically going to increase in damage 20% each time. So the three stack is going to make you hit as hard as possible. And honestly, it hits so different at the three stack compared to the one stack. So please don't just spam this unless you really need to. But honestly, try and get that three stack. Shattering Rocks, this is going to be your main CC on this build. It goes through block, it goes through all that stuff. So putting like it, being able to CC them is really necessary and it lets you control the fight so well. And also you get healed when the effect ends. And then Flames of Oblivion, <laughs> this is so much free damage to anybody around you. And then also on top of that, it's an Ardent Flame ability, so it procs one of your Seething Fury stacks. And then on top of that, you gain Major Prophecy, major prophecy and Savagery, increasing your weapon and spell crit by 2,600. And then Burning Talons, this is going to be another way to really control the fight as much as possible. By hitting somebody with Talons and then hitting somebody with Shattering Rocks afterwards, you're just in control of that fight for so long, and I absolutely love it. And also it does a little bit of nice damage too. And then Noxious Breath, this is going to be our main stam ability on our front bar. This is going to be a good source of damage and the AoE around you. And then on top of that, whenever enemies are hit by this, they're going to be given major breach. So it's going to reduce their physical and spell resistance by 6k. And then Ferocious Sleep. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of Ferocious Sleep in the past, but honestly with how hard it was hitting, I definitely recommend using this. It's really nice. I was more of just a corrosive gamer for the most part, but honestly, this has been hitting really hard. I've been hitting upwards of 10k leaps on this build. So really try and interchange between both leap and corrosive on this. It's a really good way to keep your enemies guessing what's going on. Never let them know your next move. <laughs> and then our back bar is going to be Igneous Weapon. This is going to be your source of major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20%. Race Against Time, this is going to be your snare removal on this build, so this is a good way to not be slowed down by all of the AoEs on the ground. You can get right through that, and then on top of that, you get Major, major Expedition and Minor Force, so it's going to increase your movement speed by 30%, and then your critical damage by 10%. Resolving your Vigor, this is going to be your main heal over time on this build. So this is going to be a five second heal that really gets you back to full health pretty soon. And then on top of that, you're also getting a minor resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 6k. I'm sorry, 3k, sorry. Uh, coagulating blood, this is going to be your main burst heal. So when your resolving vigor isn't healing you enough, you're going to want to use this. That way you're getting your health all the way back to full and you're not dying because dying in this game is bad and you don't want to do that. And then as our last skill, we're going to be using Volatile Armor. This is going to be your source of major resolve. This is going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 6k. And then on top of that, you're also putting a dot on some enemies too. So honestly, it's nice to have as many dots on your enemy as possible, even the low ones. And then finally, we're going to be using Corrosive as our back bar ultimate. Corrosive is just beautiful. It is honestly my favorite ultimate in the game. Being able to limit your incoming damage to 3% is absolutely, 3% of your max health is massive. You are so tanky right there because of it. And then you're hitting like a truck because you're ignoring your enemies physical and spell resistance. So you're hitting so hard. And then finally our champion points. 
since we are using Mara's Bomb, we dropped our defensive CP. So we're going to be using Mastered Arms, which is your direct damage. Deadly Aim, which is your single target damage. Wrathful Strikes, which is just 205 weapon and spell damage to all your damage abilities. And then Focus Mending, because healing is nice. Pain's Refuge is going to be our red CP. Survival Instincts, Sustained by Suffering, and Celerity. Then our green slotables are going to be Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Steed's Blessing. And then, as always, in the green tree, use Breakfall. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I honestly love this build so much. I know we just did a Magna K build last week, but I think this one is so much better already. So I hope that you guys enjoy. If you do, please, subbing to the channel is honestly so huge. If you're not, also liking the video helps a lot as well. We just passed 4,000 subs earlier in the week, so we're on that road to 5K, and every single person helps so, so, so much. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video, and if you want to see builds like this live in action, you can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash the car, where I stream five days a week. So come check it out. But then guys, that's it from me. Hope that you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.